everyone and welcome back to The Banger Bar. I am Sarah and today we're reviewing Heartless by Paul Bearer. It's their third studio album and it's out today on Nuclear Blast in Europe, the UK, Australia and New Zealand and out on Profound Lore in North America. All right, so just to jump straight in with Paul Bearer, if you haven't heard of them yet, I'm actually quite surprised. This band has become media darlings in the very short time that they've been together. They've been featured in Rolling Stone, they're on every single top 10 list of the year, and quite frankly, they've just had a meteoric rise to fame, not unlike the one that Baroness and Mastodon enjoyed in the later part of the 2000s. Paul Bearer broke out on the scene in 2012 with their breakout hit of that year, which was Sorrow and Extinction. This band very strongly emulated that sad style of doom that was perfected by Candlemass and Warning, and this record delivered big but thin, unusual vocals that were accompanied by massive riffs. When their second album came out in 2014, it was much of the same, but at the same time, the vocals were a bit different. Rather than the thinner, reverberating style that was more nasally that they had on their first album, this one featured clearer and better mixed vocals. Depending on your thoughts on the vocal style, that was either a very good thing or a very bad thing, and this album was very divisive. On Heartless, which is their third studio album, Paul Bearer is already going down the prog route. And when I bring up Baroness and Mastodon, it's because both of those bands had a similar rise. They're not the same sonically, but they also have a lot of allegorically similar things. So for example, all these bands got big very fast, ended up performing a whole shit ton right after they formed, and because of that, they likely got a little bit bored with the style that they were playing and started wanting to integrate things that were a little bit more complex. So Paul Bearer is doing that. So this clip is for the uninitiated, because if you haven't heard Paul Bearer, it's almost kind of hard to contextualize what they sound like. If you're not a fan of Doom, then you might not know that Doom Metal is really based on repetitious movements and these big, sad sounds that need a longer listen. So it's hard for me to give you a 20 second clip and say this is what Paul Bearer sound like because you want a larger context, but I'm going to do my best. So here is the beginning of album starter, I Saw the End. So hopefully that gave you a bit of a taste of their glacial style. They're slow, they're big, they're sad, it's about feeling here. The vocals kick in about a minute into the song. About a minute and a half into the song, you start getting a real feel for what guitarist and vocalist Brett Campbell's range is. It's big and it's sad, and alongside that, you've got the drums, which are providing a massive rhythmic backbone. So I'm going to be using those words a lot. Big, sad, rhythmic. That's Paul Bearer. On this third clip of the song, things go a little bit strange. You've got harmonizing vocals, which I don't recall ever hearing in a Paul Bearer record, and not only that, you've got these kind of angular choppy riffs, and I think it's here that the band is integrating more of the progressive styles that they're going to be exploring on this record. Next up, we're going to talk about song three called Lie of Survival. This to me is exactly what Paul Bearer encapsulates. It's big, sad, epic, beautiful doom. Later on in the album, they go more sludgy, which I'm not a fan of, but on this track, they do something that a lot of modern doom bands aren't great at doing, which is making a beautiful thing out of a small amount of riffs.
For me, this is the breakout song on the album. It's the best one. The next song that I'm gonna talk about is track four called Dancing in Madness. And I picked this song specifically because it really harkens back to Pagan Altar. Pagan Altar is one of my favorite doom bands, one of my favorite bands of all time. And I actually really think what they did with Mythical and Magical and the album that came after it is excellent. And it's because they use this kind of Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits-esque style of guitar soloing. If you also heard some Pink Floyd and specifically some David Gilmore in that solo, you're not alone. I'm picking up hints of David Gilmore and notes of Mark Knopfler? <laughs> oh my god. So moving on to the end of the song, the band starts showing where they're gonna go with the rest of the record and you start getting a little bit more chugging, growling sections. So this segment specifically reminds me of what Kylesa was doing in the late 2000s, especially on their album Time Will Fuse Its Worth. The album closes with the song A Plea for Understanding. This is likely the quietest segment of the entire record and buried deep in there you can hear a violin. The vocals finally kick in at about four and a half minutes in, and I know that they're meant to be heartfelt and pretty, but they're kind of saccharine. The reason why I feel like this is a bit saccharine and doesn't necessarily work is because the talk sing is a thing that metal bands don't always capture that well. It's a great style for bands like Big Black or Slint and the more 90s math rock kind of style, but on this Paul Bearer record, I just, I don't think it works. Now we're getting the segment towards the end of the album. It's sad, it's quiet, and it trails off, and that's a pretty perfect fit for a Doom record. Altogether, I do think that this record is going to continue Paul Bearer's meteoric rise to fame. This band is on the verge of exploding, and with the added help of Nuclear Blast doing their distribution in a more worldwide spectrum, I really think that Paul Bearer is going to be the next Mastodon. Obviously, they don't sound the same, but people are responding to them on an emotional and physical level, and it's because they're great songwriters and they're great musicians. Okay, so I do want to talk a little bit more about the prog that's creeping into Paul Bearer. While I don't necessarily think that Paul Bearer has gone full prog, you can definitely see that they're exploring more on this album. Altogether, I really think that your feelings on this record are going to be solely based on the fact of whether or not you like the vocals. I personally dig Doom vocals that are more nasally in the style of Lamp of Thoth or Pagan Altar, uh, and the style that Brett Campbell is using is getting cleaner and cleaner. And there's nothing wrong with that. It sounds great with Paul Bearer. And I do think that this record is going to completely explode and will probably appear on the majority of best of 2017 lists.
With Heartless, Paul Bearer has clearly demonstrated that they're becoming better songwriters and better musicians. So I'm giving this album four out of five skulls here on Overkill Reviews.